Hello everyone, today's first look is at the upcoming state machine module. This is quite a different type of module. It's not intended to add some new functionality to your game, but rather to completely change the way you use Game Creator. Before we start, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So here we are in our, uh, in our usual scene. So we have our player, a plane, a camera motor, you know, nothing, nothing special. And that's it. So there's no actions, there's no triggers, there's no conditions, there's absolutely nothing here. Now when I hit play, you'll, uh, you'll actually notice that I can draw a weapon, I can draw a revolver, I can aim the revolver, I can shoot the revolver, then I can holster it again, switch to my sword, start melee attacking, start blocking, and all of that without anything being in the scene. So, quite interesting. So let's have a look at how all of this works. So this is how all of this works. It's a, um, well, let's just call it a graph. Um, you know, it's the same machine, but let's just call it a graph. So basically what this does is if you are familiar with the behavior module, you've seen something like this before you have a graph that organizes every single action and condition. Additionally though, because this is meant for triggers rather than um, you know just behavior for characters, you have all of the triggers you are used to. And I'm going to walk through all of this, but let me, uh, let me show you something. So as you can see here, I really like this actually, this is really cool. So we can actually see exactly what we are triggering, what we are performing. All of the good stuff. And as you can see, I can start, um, you know, I'm uh, blocking, letting go, inputting melee. And if I now switch to my gun, you know, it's the other ones. So. How does all of this work? So we have our triggers here. So on start, I'm, uh, I'm giving some ammo. And then on key down, we have our actions. So on key pad one, down one, we have draw weapon and we have sheet weapon. Now, there are no nodes for conditions because they are placed in the transitions, um, these little arrows basically. And you know, that's, uh, that's how it works. So that, that's all really. So this keeps it incredibly organized, incredibly clean. Otherwise it would be uh, you know, quite a full uh, node. And as you can see, we have a uh, execute here. As, oh, I already have my, uh, I have my gun. We can execute some actions as well. Now, this is an incredibly useful way to organize everything, especially related to the player, because I'm pretty sure you've seen uh, some, some of my tutorials and there can be a lot in our scene. Now, if you then create a new scene, you have to either copy all of that over, do it again. Um, it can be quite a hassle. And that's one of the advantages, as you know, with the behavior module, you know, you create a new scene, you just use the same behavior graph for your AI. I mean, there's, there's no difference really. Um, you know, it's just going to be quick. And that's kind of the key here as well, is you can just, you know, go in, create a new scene and everything will be there. Yes, you could also do this for a new project, um, just like with behavior. Um, I haven't tried it yet, so it might just be that, you know, with behavior, you have to take some extra steps, but it can actually be done. And just like behavior, it works really similar. It lives outside of this scene, which is why this scene doesn't actually have anything. Now, if we're going to inspect our player, we will see, um, you know, the usual components and one new one. And this, as you can see, looks incredibly similar to the behavior graph. Uh, a bit more information, actually. So we see the amount of triggers we have here, actions, conditions, and parameters. Now, I didn't actually create any additional ones, so we only have the invoker here. Um, which is the player in this case because I attach this to the player and every object that uses a state machine will need to have a component like this and You know that makes sense again same as the you know the same way behavior does it as well 
But the nice thing here is because, you know, despite it being a completely new workflow, because it works so similar to what I'm used to with behavior, it was incredibly easy to set this up. And well, we'll, we'll go over that. I'll, uh, I'll show you how to use this. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's incredibly easy. And there's a couple of advantages here that um, we haven't seen in behavior yet either. And I'll go over those as well. So let me go out of play mode. We're going to go to uh, this folder um, just to keep things organized. And I'm going to create a new state machine here. So let's... There we go. And I'm just going to call this a 03 player. And yep, there we have it. Now, this is a new empty one, and I'm going to keep it windowed here so we can actually play test this. Um, obviously, normally you just do it full screen, but I, uh, you know, I want to keep everything visible. So I'm going to add a new trigger here, and unlike what we just did, so basically replace all of the usual interaction we have, um, you know, layered under the player, we're going to uh, create a sort of uh, intro. You know, he's just going to walk somewhere, draw his sword, perform a melee attack, and, you know, that's it. So not a special intro, but it's just to show how this works. So we create a trigger, and these triggers work exactly the same you're used to. So, I mean, they are the same. There's just no difference. So all of your usual stuff is here from all of the modules you might possibly have. So um, I'm going to keep this on start. But, yeah, everything is, uh, everything is there. So we're going to create a transition and we're going to draw that to our actions here. So this action for now is empty and as you can see it's highlighted as well and I'll show you what this actually means. And we're going to do a change property here, invoker. Now the important part is invoker is being used because the invoker is the one that has the uh, state machine component attached. This is exactly the same as behavior does it. So if you are familiar with behavior, this will be no different. However, we don't often see this with the player because, well, we don't really put behavior graphs on players, for example. So there we go. So change property. He's no longer controllable. And we're going to uh, have him move. Now I'm doing this because I want to show you how it works if we want to call on something that is in the scene rather than a variable or prefab or anything like that. So we want to move him to a marker. Now normally, and let me demonstrate that as well. If it would be in the scene, you just drag that marker in here. Oh, just drag that marker in there and that's it. But as you can see, we can't do that. Now the reason for this is you know, the same as why you can't do that with behavior either. It's because this is a project-wide graph. It's not scene-specific. Fortunately, we can still do all of this. And yeah, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with how this works. So we're going to create a new parameter, which will be marker. I should have changed it to game object first. Apologies. Marker, and that's it. So now we have our marker here. I'm going to create some new actions. And I'm going to use some conditions just to demonstrate how this works. So let's create a condition. Um, melee is character armed. Um, no, unarmed. Let's do unarmed. Then in the actions, we're going to do a draw weapon. The invoker is going to draw a sword. And I'm doing all of this in separate actions just to show you how it works. Not because it's, you know, you need to, just to be clear. You could all do this in the same ones if you really wanted to, but it's just to demonstrate the functionality. Now, we have these, uh, these conditions here. So is he armed? I'm just going to copy this over, going to uh, paste them in here. If he's armed now, we're going to perform these actions. And again, you, you don't need to do this. It's just to, 
just to show functionality. And then we're going to do a uh, input, what is it, input melee attack, uh, invoker is going to perform a melee attack. And that's it, you know, nothing special. Now, we do want to make sure the player is actually walking to that parameter. And in order to make sure you can do that, I should have actually dragged in the correct state machine as well. That would have been useful. There we go. And we're going to drag in the marker. Perfect. So we have everything set up. Um, it's nothing special. It's just for demonstration purposes, really. And then we're going to hit play. Now he's moving to the marker, drawing a sword and performing a melee attack. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to add an additional property. So let's do, uh, oh, I should have done this the other way around. And now he can, uh, can be controllable again. So let's hit play. And I can walk, but nothing happens. Performance is melee, and now I can walk again. Now, the interesting part is that we have all of this in this one state machine. So that's how easy it is to use all of this. Now, if I'm uh, if I want to go back to my original one, which obviously was a lot more interesting than this one, I just drag it in, and we have our uh, original state machine back, uh, the one that was a lot, a lot better. Now, some other cool things as well, um, which I really do appreciate, um, are the following things, and that's something uh, we haven't really seen before. So we can uh, copy everything and we can even copy the entire state machine, which is really, really cool. Allows for a bit more than, uh, than what we're used to. So that's how easy it is to use this. Uh, obviously, we can see a lot of benefits here. Uh, as you can see, my scene is incredibly clean and we, well, you know, we have a lot of functionality already in here. Great thing as well, create a new scene, just use it all again. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks again to Ninjitsu Games for giving me early access to give this a go and demonstrate this all to you. I'm personally really excited about this. I think it will make any project, doesn't really matter what type of project it is, a lot more easier to manage, um, incredibly clean, and it doesn't break any functionality you're used to. It's still, you know, still game creator, still all of the same modules you already have, but a different way of using all of this. And I think this is something yeah, you should be really excited about. Uh, I definitely am. So I hope you enjoyed all of this and I'll see you in the next one.